Welcome back once again, Options Traders. And we got a really good question from one of the traders in our very own group here asking, does a high call open interest imply a bullish outlook? So his question was something like this. If you happen to look at a particular stock expiration and strike, and let's say you're looking at a call and there's a really high open interest, does that imply that the market is bullish and we're anticipating the stock price to really take off to the moon? Or what if these people are doing covered calls? In which case it would imply that they think the stock is going to level out at that strike. So it's a good question. How would you figure that out by looking at the open interest? Or is it even possible? Well, let's go have a look. Let's start with a quick review of open interest. Remember, it shows the number of contracts currently open for delivery. That will be important. That's all that it shows. How many contracts are currently out in the open market open for delivery? So the open interest begins at zero on the first day of trading, and it will peak at about the halfway point, and then it will start to unwind and end near zero at expiration. So for example, let's say this is time on the horizontal. Maybe we have a 30 day option. We have open interest on the vertical. And if this is day one, we start at zero contracts because obviously it hasn't traded yet. And then over time, we will usually see the open interest start to peak. And at about the halfway point, let's say maybe around 15 days, it's going to peak and then it's going to start unwinding down to zero or at least pretty close. So again, the idea is that at some point during the options life, if this is a call option and we happen to see a really high open interest number, can we infer that the market is bullish? Or should we say that the market is more maybe neutral? Well, to do that, you have to understand the mechanics of open interest. Remember how this works. There's another video in our forum here if you want more details. But for open interest, if both traders are opening, it increases the open interest. If both traders are closing, it decreases the open interest. And finally, if one trader is opening and one is closing, there is no change to open interest. So for instance, let's say that we have just three trades from today, these three right here. The first trade is buy to open 30 calls. Who happens to get matched with a trader who is selling to open 30 calls? Second trade is buying to open 10 calls. The third is buying to close 20 calls. So the first thing to notice is that every buyer is matched with a seller. That is always a given. B matched with an S, B matched with an S. But they're not always matched opening for opening. They were in this case in green. Sometimes they'll be matched opening with closing and sometimes it'll be closing with closing. So why does this happen? Who knows? It's just a random thing. It just turns out whoever happens to get matched with that trade and the market makers or ECNs have no control over that. What they're interested in is matching a buyer with a seller. So in this example, this first trade right here would have the effect of increasing the open interest by 30. That's again because both traders are opening. 30 contracts was the trade. It's going to increase the open interest by 30. The second trade, we had an opening with a closing. And so that has no effect on open interest, no matter how many contracts were traded. And really what's happening here is that mathematically, the person who is closing is just swapping places with the person who is opening. So it's not adding to the open interest, it's not subtracting from it. So there's no change. And then finally, this third trade, notice that both traders are closing, 20 contracts. So that trade would have the effect of decreasing the open interest by 20. So the next day, the OCC looks at the net effect of all of these trades. So in this simple example with only three trades, the open interest tomorrow will increase by 10. And that's because we had one trade that increased it by 30, another that had no effect, and another that decreased it by 20. But also notice that the volume would show 60. And that's coming from 30 plus 10 plus 20. So during the day, the volume can only increase. Every single trade must increase the volume. But notice that is not true for open interest. In fact, if we threw another closing trade in here, we could actually end up 
reducing the open interest, and it would only increase the volume. So this is really important to understand the mechanics of open interest, and this will help you to see why you really can't make the determination if the market is bullish or bearish. So for instance, let's do a couple of trades. Let's call this one trade number one. So let's say that trade number one, that you are buying to open 10 calls, and you're buying these outright, not as part of a hedge, and so you are in fact bullish. And let's also assume that it is filled by a market maker who is selling, has to be selling because you're buying, and he is also opening 10 calls. So notice in this instance, this trade increases the open interest by 10 for the reasons that we just saw. But take a look at what's happening with the market maker. The market maker is not interested in just selling calls as a speculative position, just like you might be up here to buy them. Market makers are generally just trying to take the bid ask spread and to push the risk off to the rest of the market. So to hedge this position, the market maker would probably buy shares of stock and buy puts. And in doing so, he is synthetically long a call. For those of you who have seen the videos on synthetics will recognize that as a synthetic long call. And that just means that mathematically, buying shares of stock and buying puts behaves exactly like a long call. So why did the market maker do this? Well, one way to see it is that by creating this call synthetically, he's creating that for you to buy. And the way that he transfers it to you is to sell you the package. So look what the market maker is left with. He has long shares of stock, long puts, and he is short these calls. He's long calls, he's short calls, he's flat. And this is actually called a conversion. That is long stock, long puts, and short calls. And it is really a risk-free trade. So the market maker is really no longer in the position. But let's say that we had lots of trades going off like this, potentially hundreds. Would we have a large open interest? Sure, they're all opening trades. And we might be able to infer that these are bullish. In this case, you are bullish, market makers out there buying stock, and that is putting upward pressure on the stock. Okay, well, that's a possibility. Hold that thought. Let's go take a look at trade number two. This time you're selling calls to open because you're bearish. You're either selling them naked, which we never recommend, but selling calls by themselves would be a bearish position. On the other hand, if you're selling them as part of a covered call, and there's no way for the market maker to know that, your outlook would actually be neutral to slightly bullish. So see, it's starting to get confusing already. So now the market maker, to fill this order, let's say would buy to open 10 calls. If they're both opening trades, that would also increase the open interest by 10, exactly what we saw on trade number one. But now to fill this order, market maker is going to short shares of stock and short puts. Why? Short shares of stock and short puts is synthetically the same thing as a naked call. So down here, he's short calls. Right here, he's long calls. He's out. He's neutral. And so it's really just left up to you. But the point is, is that are you bearish? Maybe. We don't really know. Are you neutral to slightly bullish? Maybe. We don't know. We don't know if you're doing a covered call. And also notice that the market maker is putting downward pressure on the stock by shorting it. So notice that now in trade number two, we have exactly the same trade. We have a buy to open matched with a sell to open. Open interest is increasing, but now we're leaning towards thinking that it's a bearish trade. So the whole moral of the story is that you really never know. There's no way to tell just by looking at open interest. And that's because we don't know if these individual traders are hedging. We don't really know why these trades are being done. All we know in this case is that we had a buy to open and a sell to open for 10 calls. And because of that, it increased the open interest by 10. So when you're looking at open interest and you see a very large open interest, let's say for the calls, don't infer that it means that the market is overall bullish. It is just as possible that the market is maybe neutral to slightly bullish. It's possible the market is bearish. We don't really know because we don't know why these traders are putting on these trades. 
Another example would be maybe you bought the calls to open, but it was for a hedge against a short stock position, in which case now you're bearish even though it was buying to open 10 calls. So it's a really good question, and I hope this helps to answer it. But the main thing is to understand is don't try to find the market sentiment just by looking at the open interest. There's no way to determine it unless you could go out and ask each individual trader why they were going out and placing these trades in the first place. And if you don't know that, you're not going to get the answer by looking at the open interest. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. You can find it all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.